takes putting a new face on the old one ready for anything playing with fate not a moment too late showing the whole world Hi, Miss Harper. Hi. Working hard? Hardly working. You said that yesterday. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, you said that yesterday, too, dear. Did I say something wrong? No, you didn't say anything wrong. It's just I have all these manuscripts to read, and you keep bringing more manuscripts in here. And I really am already five days behind. Good luck. Get out. <laughs> Well, working hard or hardly working? Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, my, you know, I really just love having a boss that, you know, has such a sense of humor. It wasn't a joke. It was a question. Oh. You know, it's times like this. I'm sorry I ever went in the publishing business. Huh. Oh, so is something wrong? Well, I just had to fire one of our other readers. She got so far behind in her work. Oh. Oh, I'm way ahead, sir. Good. I'd hate to lose you. Oh. Uh, Walter. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about this, Miss Harper. Uh, Nell, isn't it? Yes, sir. But uh, now that we're reader sure, you'll have to double your workload. Oh, no, it'll be no problem at all. No, no, no problem. Well, uh, well, uh, sort of. You know, you, you fired my assistant last week. Clarence? Yes. <laughs> Well, of course I did. He insisted on flying home and donating a kidney to his mother. <laughs> oh, he was a mama's boy. <laughs> Watch out! Watch out! Get out of the street, Tommy. Joey, could you please back. cut the TV down? No, not again. Joey, cut the cartoon oh, down, honey. Joey! Stop I'm trying to read. Oh, no. I told you I was trying to read, Joey. Yeah, but I wanted to see Tommy cross the street. Oh, Joey, please. Tommy doesn't make it across the street. <laughs> he gets hit by that truck. He comes up looking like a waffle. He has little squares all over his body. Then Soapbox Sally pours syrup all over him and he springs back to life. Now, I know that is an incredible sight, but you've seen it a million times. I know. I just like the part where he gets hit by the truck. Yeah, <laughs> me too. No, Joey, honey, it's really not good for you to watch so much violence on TV. Wait a minute. You know I bought your book today? You did? Yeah. Here. Okay. Joey, is it okay if I use my crayons on your side of the wall? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> I didn't like the way he said, oh. oh. Hetty, why are you coming home from work so late? You missed dinner. Well, the teachers at the university went out on strike. Good for them. They are hardworking, underpaid people, and they are molding the future of our country. Because the teachers went out, I got laid off. Those greedy old lazy bones. <laughs> but I want to say, why did you get laid off? Well, the university had to cut back on administrative staff, so I had been out all day looking for a temporary job. Oh, honey. I need some aspirin. Addie, wait. Why don't you sit down? Let me get it for you, babe. Oh, Please. thank you. I don't want you to get too discouraged, you know? Well, I didn't have the best day of my life, either. Listen, why don't I call Maggie and see if she'll come down and watch the boys, and uh, I'll take you downstairs to yoga spot, and I'll teach you to dinner. Oh, now that would be a great idea. I know, honey. Living well is always the best revenge. <laughs> okay. I should never have listened to my mother. You know, she told me if I learned to type 65 words per minute, I'd get stuck in a job typing. 
Now I can't get a job because I can't type 65 words per minute. Oh, I am so sorry. But there must be something out there that you can do. Can you drive a bus? <laughs> there are a lot of jobs like that out there, but when they see PhD on my resume, they tell me I'm overqualified. I mean, it's flattering, but it's so discouraging. Well, now you're so lucky you've never been told you're overqualified. <laughs> uh, thank you. Ah, bienvenido, senoritas. Your presence in my humble restaurant Why makes my you heart please sing. Please just cut the phony accent. Nobody here is really in the mood. Me either. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind being in the restaurant business if I didn't have to deal with the public. Ah, uh, buenas noches, señor. Gracias, muchas gracias. <laughs> I mean, if people want a home-cooked meal, why don't they just stay at home? Marty, go away. Touchy, touchy, and you know, I thought you came in here for some atmosphere. Oh, Marty, it's my fault. I got laid off. Lost your job? That's terrible. Marty, thank you for being concerned. Well, of course I'm concerned. I'm your landlord. <laughs> you only gave me one month's security deposit. Marty. Adios. That's Spanish for get out. Hey, business is business. If you want compassion, rent an apartment at the Vatican. <laughs> Marty, just bring me an omelet, Valencia. That'll be cash, right, Addy? <laughs> oh, enough about my problems. Have you found a new assistant yet? Oh, no, honey. And I'm working every hour of every day. And if things weren't bad enough, today Mr. Broderick comes in and he threatens to fire me. No. I gotta tell you, I'm under so much pressure, but I'm not going to let this get to me. Good girl. Mm. Well, now, you know, I, I just never thought I would be in this position. I mean, I've got a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a PhD, and I can't find a job. You want to be a waitress? Marty, a waitress. Well, does she have any experience? Will you get out of here? You're talking to a Phi Beta Kappa here. She shouldn't even be eating in this joint. <laughs> you know, when are you going to interview for a new assistant? Oh, Eddie, I really don't know, but I better do something fast. You know, call me crazy, but you need a job, and you need an assistant. Hey, Raphael, two light bulbs, por favor. <laughs> now you want me to work for you? Well, I'm sorry I would have asked you before, now, but I said I never thought you would be interested in doing that. Oh, Mel, I need a temporary job. Well, honey, this is temporary, and you got it? Yeah, thank you, <laughs> Oh! Eddie, this is the best idea I've ever had in my life. Good morning. Oh, oh no. yeah. This will be the most fun we've ever had together. <laughs> you know, we could go to work together, we have lunch together, That's we right. have the water cooler together. Oh. Anything you say, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marty. I'll tell you, this idea of mine was a brainstorm. Oh, I'll tell you, genius, a genius, genius job. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. <laughs> Because it was my idea. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. <laughs> That's more like it, ladies, huh? <laughs> Mill server. Oh, Mr. Broderick, I know exactly what you're going to say. You're going to say the new assistant of mine is really terrific. And that she's already put three synopsis already on your desk. Let me take that back. I'd say five by now. I've got zip on my desk. Oh, you don't have any synopsis on your desk? But you know what probably happened? She probably couldn't find you office. You know how it is for temporary help. I could be staring at temporary help. <laughs> my office is not that difficult to find. You are so right in a lovely office it is. You know, I particularly love the lovely picture of your lovely wife and your two lovely children on your lovely desk. And if you just stay here one minute, it would be lovely. <laughs> Darling, <laughs> Mr. Broderick doesn't have zip on his desk. Just a minute, Nell. I'm almost finished with this chapter. Good. I hope it's the last chapter. Honey, um... Could you uh, go to the fifth floor and use the, uh, the Xerox machine? They have, uh, they have jelly donuts. Oh, I'm a diabetic. Well, try the third floor. They have bagels. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, 
Honey, I, I just ran into Mr. Broderick. Oh, yeah, you know, I passed him in the hall. He smiled at me. Oh, yeah, well, they always smile. That's why they wear hoods when they chop off your head. <laughs> relax now. Relax. Okay, I'm gonna relax. <laughs> uh, baby, exactly how many synopsis have you written? Oh, I'm almost finished with my first one. Mm -hmm, your first one. Well, actually, dear, you should be finished with your third one. Oh, no, this is a very complicated plot. And then I got a little confused, so I had to go back and reread part of it. You know, darling, right now they're growing trees in Norway to make paper for our books. And those trees are growing faster than you're reading. <laughs> no, I don't believe in speed reading. I believe in being more thoughtful. But, darling, I didn't hire you to think. I hired you to read. Well, I'm sorry, Nell, but I have to work at my own pace. You know, I might be able to read a little faster if someone wasn't coming in to check up on me every five minutes. Are you forgetting that I'm your boss? Forgetting? How could I? You remind me of that every five minutes. Look, I wouldn't be checking up on you if you would just do your job, you know? And you said it was going to be fun working with you. Fun? If it were fun, would I have lost two assistants in the past month? Oh, I think I know why they quit. Oh. You sound like you're unhappy here. <laughs> unhappy? Are you kidding? Honey, when I leave here, I go home, I blow up some balloons, and I open a bottle of champagne. Oh, then maybe you should just leave. Are you trying to tell me I'm dismissed? No, I'm not telling you that you are dismissed. You're fired! <laughs> Great things about being a grown up. <laughs> I'm coming! Hey, now. Hi, right, Maggie. Hi. Nice to see you. Why don't you just come right into my house? Gotta use your refrigerator. That's good. Maggie, did yours break down? No, it runs great, but my mother's coming over tonight. She sees frozen dinners in my freezer, her heart will stop beating. <laughs> I'm not kidding, she saw some fish sticks at my place last year, had to breathe into a paper bag for 10 minutes. Maggie, you're not gonna get all that stuff into my freezer. Oh, sure, there's, there's plenty of room, and besides, this shouldn't be in here. What? Bacon. What? Scientifically proven, this is the only food that stays in your body your entire life. <laughs> I'm a dental hygienist, I know these things. Oh, yeah, Addie's working for you. Yeah, you know, I don't think I could work with somebody I live with. Thank God my husband's not a dentist. He could barely drive that cab. I fired Addie. You fired Addie? Yeah, I fired Addie. And you Californians say we New Yorkers are tough? <laughs> you just mugged your best friend. Wait a minute, listen, I... I fired her because she was a slow reader. I needed a fast reader. I mean, this is not my fault. The woman has a PhD. Yeah, but she reads like she got it on a football scholarship. <laughs> I'd love to stay and listen to you rationalize this. I really would. But before my mother gets here, I gotta run to the bakery, get a homemade pie, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Your best friend. I hope you can live with it now. <laughs> Thank you so much for your advice. That's what 
I'm here for to help and support all my listeners. Remember, Helen, you've done nothing wrong. And if you do what I told you, your husband will never be impotent again. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. This is Dr. Fran Roberts. If you have any problems you'd like to discuss, just dial 555-HELP. In Westchester and New Jersey, it's 311-555-HELP. And in Long Island, it's 555-SICK. And don't forget, don't forget this Saturday night, my show will be dedicated to men who cross-dress. Hello, you're on the air. Oh, uh, What's hi. your first name and where you live? Oh, um, 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 my... My name is Nell, from the village. Yes, Nell, what's your problem? Oh, no, 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 I don't have a problem. Not me. Now, it's, it's this wonderful lady that lives upstairs. Anyway, you see, this wonderful lady that lives upstairs felt compelled to hire her very best friend for this job. But as it turns out, her very best friend wasn't qualified. So in order for this wonderful lady who lives upstairs not to lose her job, she had to fire her very best friend. And now her very best friend is not speaking to this wonderful lady who, who lives upstairs. And she should be upset. What kind of a woman would fire her best friend? <laughs> That's unnatural. Wait, 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 Doc, Doc, wait, wait. Well, you see, last night, you had this man who kept tuna fish in his pants, and now you tell me this is unnatural. It's obvious this woman who lives upstairs is a cruel and insensitive person. What? She should seek professional counsel. Oh, wait just a minute. This wonderful woman upstairs is a fine woman. Uh-huh. Well, well, she is. I mean, children, children like her. Uh-huh. Well, they do. There's even talk of, of putting up a statue. Oh, really? What, oh, what is it? Well, that's the wonderful thing about doing this show. I was able to reach out and help yet another highly disturbed person. <laughs> Just a minute. Oh, Grandpa. So you can, Daddy, huh? What? Yeah, I heard you on the radio with Dr. Roberts. I cannot understand how you could fire your best friend. It's unnatural. Listen, I'm a businesswoman now. I have to take responsibility for my actions in the marketplace. That's a crock, Nell. Nothing personal, but you're as mean as a tomcat with a hairball, and you always have been. <laughs> Where are the boys, or did you fire them too? They're in their room, and if you would just excuse me, I'm gonna go downstairs so I can be by myself. Oh, Dr. Roberts, this is Stanley in the village. You know the wonderful lady who lives upstairs? There's no talk of a statue. <laughs> um, you ready to order some food yet? No, I'll just have another cup of decaf, okay? No, I want to uh, thank you for taking one of the finest Spanish restaurants in Greenwich Village and turning it into a coffee shop. You get out of my face. Your coffee is not that good. Well, uh, <clears throat> just stop me if I'm a little off base, but aren't we a wee bit edgy tonight? I fired Addie. So? You mean you don't think I'm a dirt-sucking scuzz bucket? <laughs> no. I'm sure you had a very good reason. And if you didn't, it's certainly none of my business. What's that mean, anyway? <laughs> what am I going to do by Addie? She's my very best friend. Come on. Best friends are not that hard to find. All you do is move your second best friend up to best friend. <laughs> You know, Marty, somehow, whenever you talk to me, I always feel better about myself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? I want you to have a little something to eat, okay? okay. Now, I'm going to send the waitress over. Just uh, stay away from the fish. Oh. 
Yes. How's the chicken, boss? Overqualified. <laughs> Adam, what are you doing? I'm trying to take your order. You want to snap it up? I've got five other tables, and some of them are big tippers. <laughs> I listen about this morning. I'm sorry, but I have been under a lot of pressure. I recommend the fish. <laughs> Adam, I said I'm sorry. All right, all right. I shouldn't have fired you, but I never should have hired you either. You're my very best friend. Soup or salad? <laughs> I want my very best friend, Annie. Oh, come on. I mean, we wouldn't be arguing like this, and I wouldn't be feeling guilty if you weren't my very best friend. Otherwise, we'd have thrown your old slow eating butt on the street a long time ago. <laughs> Is that your way of apologizing? <laughs> well, it's the nicest one I've ever given you. <laughs> You got that right. <laughs> oh, Nell. I wasn't the right person for the job. Lord knows I do read slow. Oh, yeah. Maybe we were both wrong. Look, Annie, look, I've been thinking. And I feel that anyone who hires you would be lucky to even work with you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, guess what? What? They're making progress with the strike, so it looks like I'll be back at work at the university in two weeks. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> so, are you going to work here until then? Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, since you are going to be working here, I, I think you should get off your slow eating behind and get my dinner. <laughs> but I would like some fried chicken, and I don't want it from here. I want oh, you to go won't. down the street and get it. Red chicken. Annie, I'm so happy for you. You mean the strike is settled, huh? Well, I got good news, too. Mr. Broderick says he has me a new assistant. I got to go with team fine. Yes. Miss Harper. Yes. Your new assistant. <laughs> My nephew, Walter. <laughs> working hard or hardly working? Your favorite. Oh, no, tell me, it's, it's spinach? Yes. Oh. And I'm making you a roast leg of lamb and those little potatoes you like, you know? And I got Please. you fresh asparagus made oh. hollandaise sauce and your favorite dessert. Wait, 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 what is, what is, what is it? Strawberry low-cal yogurt. <laughs> I'll tell you, I tell you, only a best friend would try to help me keep my girl this feeling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got you something else, too. I am? I got something for you, too. Do we of how we? Oh, honey, please. Oh, I said shop at the same store. A coin purse, just, just what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. actually, this is sort of a peace offering because, well, sometimes I'm a little overbearing. Oh, honey, those occasions are so rare. They're not even worth mentioning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know. To tell the truth, I've been known to be a little guilty of pouting and sulking, well, too. Well, while you at it, you can throw in whining, too, baby. <laughs> that, too. <laughs> well, well, we must be doing something right. We went out and bought each other presents. Oh, yeah. And this is such a lovely shade of gold. Yeah, my favorite color. This is such a lovely shade of red. Yeah. It's my favorite color. <laughs> 